G'day guys and welcome back to True Footy for yet another video, this time continuing a little series I've started where I'm going to be sort of ranking the previous drafts over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, last week we did the 2017 edition and it seemed to get some interest. So we're gonna continue that series. There was a few people asking for the 2018 one. I've decided to push that one back a little bit because I prefer to do the 2016 one next because this one is quite an interesting one. So I've taken your feedback. Uh, obviously the last video that I did I just had the top 25 draft picks of that draft, which meant even if there were some guns later in the draft, I wasn't able to include them in the rankings. So what I've done for this one is have the top 20 draft picks and then added some of the better players taken later in that draft so that we have a more even look at the total draft. And to be honest, a lot of the best players did come from later in this draft, which makes it very interesting. So we're gonna crack on again with Tier Maker. Before we get into it though, I will shout out, of course, the sponsors of today's video in manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. You just go to manscaped.com, browse the huge variety of products. They've got everything you could possibly want. Helps you get the job done quickly and easily. It certainly helped me on my recent trip to Croatia. And of course, 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20. So please enjoy. Cool, so we're back at it again um, with slightly different, I think, um, lists of or categories that I've picked here. I've got top liner and genuine gun again. And then I've got good, decent, and average. I thought Spud was a little bit harsh, um, but we'll get into the specifics of that. As I always like to start these team makers, I'm gonna pick one from each category so we can set our boundaries, and then we'll go from there. It'll be easier to group players from that point on. So the top liner, probably close to the best player from this draft, I would go with Tom Stewart, who was taken quite late in this draft, uh, You know, famously drafted after not being long out of the amateurs, and was taken, oh, I can't remember, in the 50s or 60s of this draft, I think and it's of course as recently as last year become a premiership player and multiple Australians one of the best players in the game at what he does and has been uh, since he was drafted almost so there that's a clear standard for what is a top liner one of the best players in the comp for his position interestingly I think only one player out of the uh, all the players that I have there has been delisted from their footy club or uh, one was retired and one delisted so we'll start with the delistee in Jordan Gallucci um, who we're going to categorize as average again a, a spud felt too hard and he was the only one formally delisted in that sense as well. So Gallucci was his fast um, goal scoring midfielder taken, I think it like pick 13 to Adelaide or pick 12 to Adelaide uh, back in this draft and uh, unfortunately didn't make the most of his opportunity. I think he plays Sandful now. I could be wrong, but either way, that's probably the top and the bottom established for this ranking. A player that is a genuine gun, I would probably have uh, Josh Dacos, who is potentially going to have an All-Australian season this year. Um, he's not a top liner yet because you know he hasn't been doing it for quite long enough, but he's having a very, very good season this guy again was taken very very late in this draft one of the last picks I think if I'm not mistaken um, as a father son to Collingwood of course and so obviously you know if he continues this trajectory of being close to an all-australian wingman this year Collingwood obviously got a very very good deal out of that particular draft and frankly the father son rule in general with both Dacos brothers the player who is merely good uh, I would say Griffin Logue uh, he can be inconsistent obviously played most of his career at Fremantle at this point um, recently did an ACL I think if I'm not mistaken which is unfortunate for the ruse uh, but he is a good player. I'd say better than decent on his day. He can be a bit of a gun, but not, not a super consistent, um, you know, genuine gun of the competition. And then decent, um, who have we got here that I can slot into decent? Then in decent, I don't know, probably someone like a Jack Scrimshaw again. Uh, he was pick seven in this draft and then got traded to the Hawthorne Footy Club. At times has looked very, very good, but this year he's been subbed out a couple of times, um, had some single digit possession games. Then more recently had a 31 possession uh, game. Obviously just not showing that consistency he probably flits between good and decent. All right, now it's a little bit more open slather. Uh, Andrew McGrath, I would say, is a genuine gun. He was obviously the number one draft pick of this year. He's never really reached the heights of being a top liner. Um, he's sort of flitted between the midfield and defense, so never really uh, made it as a genuine on-baller of the competition. I suppose he's still kind of young, like he could be one of those late bloomers later in his career, but at the moment, uh, I would say he's just a very good performer consistently for Essendon without being anything spectacular. Speaking of spectacular, though, we'll give Shy Bolton a uh, the second top liner position. Uh, again, statistically very hard to, to match him against midfielders or forwards because he sort of is really, really good at both, but he's an unbelievable player when he's on, a genuine match winner. Yeah, and for me, an absolute top liner in this draft, no doubt about it. Will Setterfield is an interesting one. He'd probably put him in good. He's having a very, very good year, but it took him a long, long time to get here. So he'd probably be one between good and decent just because I'm trying to look at their career holistically rather than just who they are right now at this point, point in time. But yeah, I'd say good on current form but um, has been decent to average in the past. 
Will Brody, I'll say decent, certainly not average, but not quite good just at the moment because he's had really one standout year for Fremantle um, and currently finds himself out of the side to a combination of form and fitness, but there's definitely been games where he hasn't been picked on form. So uh, yeah, Will Brody at the moment is decent and over the course of his career hasn't performed enough to go higher than that, I'm afraid. Tim English is a top liner at the moment, probably my pick for All-Australian Ruckman, obviously probably right up there with Sean Darcy and, um, and Roland Marshall's actually having a good year as well, but um, you know, top fantasy player in the comp still, I think. Regardless of fantasy or whatever, he is uh, having a fantastic game. And as I recall this video, he's just had 60 hitouts against Sydney, which is just wild. We will mention as well the other um, one of the other best rucks of the game in Sean Darcy, who was picked 38 in this year's draft, or 37, I'm not sure, but it was a relatively late one. I remember when they drafted him, he was just this ball of fat. Um, so his development to be one of the best rucks in the game, one of the most dominant tap hit out, uh, hit out ruckman, has been phenomenal, to be honest. And uh, yeah, absolute top liner in my eyes. Nick Lark, he's probably in genuine gun. Uh, he's 25 now with the potential to being a top liner, but the fact that he's third in the Coleman or something like that, uh, with North being as bad as they are, probably makes a case for him being higher, but again, uh, hasn't demonstrated enough consistently in the past. I'd like to see what he can do with um, you know, a better performing midfield and backline really, getting the ball to him more often because uh, frankly, he has that potential. But again, you know, not quite as heralded as the four players I have above him in top liner. Hugh McCluggage is a genuine gun as well. Again, flirted with being one of the best players in the competition at his role. Again, not a consistent match winner, heavily outside player, but still one of the absolute best at it. So I'd say he's genuine gun and, and and clearly below the, the four I've mentioned so far. Todd Marshall's good. He had a 45 goal season last year, which is pretty good output for a, uh, a tall forward. And currently on 23 from 13 games, I think uh, I've seen some criticism from Port fans in the past, but I think he's definitely better than decent when you're putting up numbers like 45 goal seasons. Got to be pretty happy with that. I feel like we're going to get a glut of players sort of in good um, and it's going to be middle heavy in this particular video, but we'll progress regardless. Ben Ainsworth is probably decent. He was number four in this particular draft. And uh, I think he's the sort of player who averages, you know, 15, 16 touches and a goal a game as a pretty good forward and just a couple of tackles. So I think that output, uh, even though he looks better than that at times, isn't really demanding of anything better than decent, to be honest. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on Ben Ainsworth, but let me know in the comments what you think. Jared Berry is a good player. Again, another player whose potential um, and how how quickly he became good at the Brisbane Lions sort of gave us the uh, impression that he might be, you know, either in the gun or uh, top liner position. But in terms of consistency, I feel like he's had periods where he hasn't been as uh, convincing, I suppose. So I'd say he's a good player. Jack Bowes is good. Um, you know, obviously much talked about as a trade last year. He's come into Geelong and I think he's been good without being fantastic and he wasn't amazing at the Gold Coast either. Jai Simkin is probably in good as well. He pr I probably wouldn't give him the credit of being a genuine gun. I do think he has that potential. He's always been one of my favorite players from that draft and a player that I was hoping would slide to the Eagles. I think he went at 11 and the Eagles took Venables a little bit later than that. On his day, he's a genuine gun, but uh, you know, in terms of consistency, what's he averaging like 20 touches a game this year? Probably a little bit less than that. Um, I think North could be getting more out of Jai Simkin, but that because he's so talented as to why I'm framing that negatively. He is at least a good player, I would say. Isaac Cumming, he's good, I would say. A good running defender for the Giants. Again, uh, one of those young guns that was talked about and you don't really hear too much about him unless you're watching the Giants closely. Um, speaking of the Giants, I'd probably put Harry Perryman in as decent. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of that. Maybe I just don't watch those players enough, um, but that's probably how I would frame those two players. Oli Florent is a player that I find difficult to grade here because I always think of him as a genuine gun, but in terms of output, you know, he's really been outshadowed by the younger Chad Warner, for instance. Errol Golden already in that midfield outperforming him. I'd, I'd probably say he's good, you know? He, he's quite good. But if we're honest, is he as good as Dacos, McGrath, Larky, or McCluggage? I'd say no. I'd say he's good. He's probably better than some of those players in the good section, but regardless, probably pads out the middle for me. There's two Eagles on this list I haven't mentioned. Um, I'm going to put Daniel Venables. This one's tricky. He was uh, pick 14, I think, or pick 13 to the Eagles, and uh, obviously retired due to concussion issues. And unfortunately, right before that, he was sort of in and out of the side. But at the end of the day, he is a premiership player. So I'm going to put him in decent. Um, but the, the truth is, we will never really know exactly how good Daniel Venables would have been. He's a bit of an outlier in this video. Tim Taranto, I will put in top lineup because I think he has put in a consistent body of work over a period of time. I think, was it 2020 or 2019, he won the um, best and fairest for GWS. I can't remember, but he was very, very young at the time. I think it might have been in the grand final team 2019. I might look that up. Wikipedia has saved the day and confirmed that he was the, the Giants best and fairest in a year that made the grand final. And of course, right now, he is a Brownlow fancy 
for having a terrific first season um, at the Richmond Footy Club. So I think he's a top liner. Um, then you've got the two uh, hyphenated SPP and SPSs. Sam Pelpepper is a tricky one. I'd probably put him in good. He's not on the McCluggage, McGrath, Dacos level in terms of um, smaller types, but he is such an impactful and exciting player to watch on his day. He's definitely at least good and another player where the stats don't really show uh, what he can bring to the table because he's kind of a pressure forward that's dynamic. And I do think he's a bit of a gun, but in terms of this analysis, he probably slots into good. Sam Petrovsky seaton I'm struggling with a little bit, probably in between average and decent. He still finds himself in the Eagles' best 22, but it's not a massive endorsement, is it? Um, he's been he's actually been pretty okay for us. Look, he's still got his spot on the list, um, and I suppose he's what played over 100 games. Uh, yeah, I think that by itself uh, across two clubs puts you in decent, but he's certainly a clear level below all those other players in good. So just to summarize here, we've got five top liners from this draft. So it's actually a better draft than I realized. Uh, Tom Stewart, Shy Bolton, Tim English, Sean Darcy, the two rucks, uh, and Tim Taranto, of course. Genuine guns are Dacos, McGrath, Larky, and McCluggage. There's a huge glut of good players that I've put in the middle here in uh, Griffin Logue, Will Setterfield, Todd Marshall, Jared Berry, Jack Bowes, Jai Simpkin, Isaac Cumming, Ollie Florin, and Sam Pal Pepper. So let me know. That's the group that might be the most contentious. Let me know who you'd put up or down in that group. Uh, in decence, I've got Scrimshaw, Brody, Ainsworth. Geez, Gold Coast did not draft well in this draft. Perryman, again, I put that one down to a little bit of ignorance. Venables is decent because he's a premiership player, and Sam Petrovsky Seaton's played, um, you know, 100 plus games of footy. Gallucci is just the one I had to c categorize as the bottom of this list because he is the only one that's been formally delisted. Venables is actually retired. Gallucci was delisted. So there you have it, guys. That is my crack at the 2016 draft. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with. This can be tricky with players that have played like a decent amount of time because you've got to both look at what they've achieved to date and how they are exactly as a player right now. So getting that worked out and, and making it even and logical is the tricky part. But as always, I welcome your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below, guys. So I'm back from Croatia now. I'm back for a few weeks um, before a little bit more travel. But for now, can't wait to keep this series going. And of course, I'll be back with all the round reviews and uh, just the tips that I do every week as well. So stay tuned for more content. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.